Hey guys, how's it going? Today, I'm going to be showing you a step-by-step -step guide of how to convert your road or gravel bike into a single chain ring one by system. So let's have a look at the parts we're going to need for this conversion. First off is a narrow wide type of chain ring suitable for your chain set. Secondly, we might need some uh, shorter chain ring bolts. Uh, it all depends on what yours comes equipped with. And finally, this is an opportune time to install a wider range cassette, which you may feel is necessary depending on your local terrain. I'm going to use this rather tatty looking Sunrace version, which actually doesn't have too many miles on it. Moving on, let's have a look at what tools are going to be required. First off, there's an opportune time to check your chain wear using one of these chain checking tools to make sure you're not going to wreck a new chain ring with a worn out chain. Um, quick link pliers if you've got SRAM or KMC or new Shimano chains. Uh, Allen keys are a given. Um, cable cutters for chopping the cable out. Um, you might need a chain splitter to shorten your chain or split it. Uh, torque wrench is always a good idea to get your torques correct. Uh, scissors for trimming off the bar tape and electrical tape when reinstalling. Electrical tape for tidying up the end of the bar tape. Uh, chain whip and cassette tool if you're going to change cassette. Um, bit of grease uh, in case you have to take the chain set out of the bike so we re-grease it. Um, mallet's handy to tap the chain set out if it can be a bit stiff sometimes. Uh, a bit of a rag to clean up any old grease. Um, and these bits here are potential optionals depending on what sort of chain set you have. So this tool is for using on chain, older type of chain ring bolts. Um, you can use a big flathead screwdriver sometimes, but um, I've got the tool for it. Uh, this is an older type design for extracting cranks. You may need this depending on your chain set again. And uh, finally, if you have Shimano type chain sets, you're gonna need one of these tools for the preload adjuster at the very end. And if we're changing the cassette, we're likely to give, need to give it a little tune up. So we could use a screwdriver or um, Allen keys, depending on what type of arrangement we have on the adjusters. I'm just gonna put the chain checker on a chain. It's a really simple device if you've not used one before and they're very cheap and affordable, like five pounds, six pounds. Um, just to make sure my chain's within spec and um, it's not going to chew up my brand new chain ring. Um, so it checks the stretch between 0.5 and 0.75 where 0.5 you should start looking at changing your chain and 0.75 is that your chain is already too worn and you need to change it immediately. So it does, if it drops through the link, it's too worn. So that's the 0.5 end, so it's clearly not too worn there and 0.5 won't go through, so the 0.75 definitely won't go through. Um, so yeah, my chain's fine at this stage, so yeah, just for a five pound, you can keep your chain wear, an eye on your chain wear, and uh, ensure you get good life from your cassettes, so you can put multiple chains on your cassettes without affecting shifting. So, starting the conversion in earnest now, first thing we need to do is remove the chain. To do this, I'm using my chain plier tools to split the master link and just like that, the chain is apart, super easy and we can remove it from the bike. The next thing I'm gonna do is using the cable cutters, I'm gonna trim off the cable end protector. So at a point later, I can easily pull the cable through the uh, bike frame. Then I'm going to release the cable using the Allen keys from the front mech so it's uh, no longer holding any tension. Uh, so it's pretty easy to unwind it from the Allen key and free it from the bike. No problem there. Make sure it's just dangling around and not catching anything. Moving on to the front of the bike and the left hand brake lever, peel back the hood rubber to expose the brake and gear cable mechanism. Moving to the inside of the shifter, we need to pry open this little grey access uh, hatch to give us access to the gear cable. Now with the hatch open, we should be able to poke and pull the gear cable to um, make the barrel pop from the other side of the shifter 
once this happens you can pull the cable through the hole of the bike and release it from its uh, shifter and that's the gear cable inner removed. With the gear inner cable now removed from the bike we can concentrate on removing the gear outer cable. If you wanted to do a quick job you could simply snip the outer cable from the handlebar side and leave it wrapped up with the bar tape but I'm going to do this properly and I'm going to unwrap the bar tape. To do that we first need to remove the electrical tape at the end of the bars which ties down the bar tape then we can unwrap uh, the bar tape up to the uh, up to the shifter mechanism that's as far as we need to go once undone you'll find that the cables beneath have been taped to the bars to hold them in position so trim these away with a knife or some scissors quite simply and then uh, remove the tape and you should have the cables free from the uh, from the handlebar themselves. We then can remove the gear outer cable from the shifter and then from the frame and it's pretty much there. Um, I'm not going to remove the internal bits from my frame for now because um, it's a lot of work. Next we can remove the front mech from the frame. To do this uh, we need an allen key. Often there's a chain catcher also constrained under the same bolt so be careful not to drop or use that at the same time so there's a front mech on the left and there's a chain catcher on the right and on my bike which is a specialized diverge the actual um, front mech uh, brazon clamp is removable so I'm going to remove this to make the bike look cleaner um, I do need to find some sort of grommet to uh, cover up the threaded holes in the frame but that's one for eBay or Amazon at a later date um, the thread sizes are very small so yeah, for me it's just a unwind that and that comes off uh, give that a clean up at a later point the next stage is we need to swap out the chain rings on the chain set on some chain sets we can do this without removing the crank from the bike but um, on my chain set I know I need to remove the chain set from the bike because um, I tried doing it the other way and it doesn't work um, so follow your manufacturer's instructions for whatever chain set you have. Um, each is different and there's many sorts out there. Uh, for this one, I, it has a self-extracting mechanism in the left hand um, crank. Um, so undo that Allen bolt with a M10 Allen key and uh, the crank pulls itself away from the chain set, exposing the spindle in the BB. We can then simply use a soft mallet to tap the spindle and release it from the bearings and pull the chain set from the other side of the frame to release it from the bike. So I'm just going to show you that from the other angle now so give it a gentle tap to release the spindle from the bearings and pull it through the frame just like that. Whilst the chain set is removed from the frame I think it's a good opportunity to clean a hard access area so just get a little bit of degreaser and um, clean up any muck. I also um, take this opportunity to check out the bearings, see if there's any dry or warm bearings in there. Just give them a little spin to make sure they're not feeling rough. And whilst you have the chain set removed, give it a good clean because it's often very greasy and dirty and you don't want it getting everywhere. Also, make sure you don't lose any wavy washers or seals that may have got caught on the spindle use a little degreaser and a rag to clean up anything before you start work on it you'll save yourself a lot of mess and time now we've got the chain set off the bike we can finally remove the chain rings from the chain set itself now these practice work chain sets are a little unusual as they only have a male side of a bolt that is threaded into the inner chain ring itself most chain rings uh, most chain sets I should say have a dual sided um, chain ring bolt like the ones I'm going to install in the tick which have a male and female side to them which usually takes two different allen keys to undo one on each side of the chain ring or potentially if you have an older style of a chain set you might have to use that special tool or a very large flats, flat screwdriver to remove these little chain ring bolts um, 
but they're pretty easy. You just crack them open and uh, unscrew them to release the chain rings. Now, because this chain set's a little unusual, I'm going to have to replace these weird bolts that screw into the inner chain ring with normal type ones. I purchased these from Superstar Components for about 10 or 12 pounds. As you can see there, the nice anodized purple and the say in grease the threads and tightens the seven newton meters. So first thing we need to do is apply a little grease onto all the thread. The grease I'm going to use is the Park Tool General Grease, the PL1000 or something like that. I'm just going to apply a little smear to each of the male sections here and then repeat all five times. Now that all our chain ring bolts are greased up, we can fit the chain ring to the chain set. Um, I'm going to position mine on the outside of the tabs uh, to create a better clearance between the chain ring and the frame. You can play with this a little bit. Um, some sizes and some, some chain lines work better on the inside and outside. On this bike, I'm going to go for the outside. Um, so grab the female side, put it on the inside of the chain set and pop the male side through the outside and they're quite fiddly little things so I just like to twist them in with my finger just to get the threads started and make sure I'm not cross threading them and repeat this process five times over. Don't talk them up just yet, just install them loosely to help you uh, get everything in position and aligned. Once all five bolts are installed finger tight, I'm going to grab a 5 and 6 mil Allen key, um, place it in the, uh, in the chain ring to, to tighten them up and I'm just going to nip them up to take out all the free slack I couldn't get out with my fingers. So just very lightly uh, tightened at this point and again repeat five times. Now the final stage of this uh, chain ring install onto the chain set is to torque the bolts to the 7Nm specified. So keeping the 6mm allen key in the back of the chain ring bolt and using the torque wrench at 5mm in the front, I'm just going to nip them up to 7Nm each. This isn't particularly tight, um, I don't know how to describe it, maybe medium tight. Uh, if you haven't got a torque wrench, you don't need to really wail on them, just you know, nip them up. Uh, make sure they're not going anywhere, because if they come loose, they can damage your frame. Um, something to bear in mind, if these come loose and they're spinning around, especially at the back, if they're spinning around and, and start digging into your chain, uh, chain stay, uh, they can make your a right mess of your frame if you're not careful. So you do want to make sure they're tightened correctly. Next we're going to reinstall the chain set, so we need to give the shaft a good lubing here, uh, make sure we're not going to get any friction issues or uh, corrosion issues at a later date, so apply a liberal lube to the shaft and spline, um, yeah, we just don't want to make sure it's going in dry and causing issues, um, pop the wavy washer back on and reinstall through the bearings on the frame.
Once the uh, spindle of the chain set is through both bearings, I like to give it a good tap with the palm of my hand just to make sure it's sitting home firmly and not going anywhere and everything's compressed correctly. With the drive side installed, we can then install the non-drive side of the chain set, which is usually the opposite of removing it. So in this case, it's just sitting at home and screwing it on to the specified torque requirements. But like I said earlier, there's a lot of different styles of chain sets out there, so follow instructions for your particular chain set to make sure it's installed correctly. So, stage one is complete, we have installed the single chain ring, but there are many other concerns that we need to address. The next thing we need to do is re-secure the brake cable or brake hose to the handlebars, then re-wrap the handlebars with the handlebar tape. I'm not going to go into specifics about this because I'm not particularly good at it. Um, I will link a video below to the Park Tools one because they did an exceptional video on how to wrap your hand, re wrap your handlebars. Um, so I'm just going to play this clip and fast forward. Once the handlebars re wrapped, we can re um, pop this little service door back into the its position in the in the shifter and roll back the uh, the shifter hood rubber back into position. Just make sure it's all sort of locked in its little keyways and looking nice. Now you have your single chain ring installed, the next question you have to ask is am I going to change the cassette? If you keep your normal cassette that you've been using, you will likely find that you will lose some of your climbing gears and some of your top speed gears. Now for most people, they don't mind losing their top speed gears too much. With a 40 tooth chain ring at the front and an 11 tooth at the back, you can happily reach speeds of 50 km per hour. But losing the climbing gears can be devastating for some, so you have to pay attention to your local area and what gears you use for your climbs. For myself, in my area, I have plenty of very steep short climbs with grades up to 20%, and being a slightly heavier and taller rider, I like to spin up these so for me a ratio close to one to one is very very ideal so I can sit and spin up the climbs comfortably. So to achieve that close to one to one ratio I will be swapping out the 1134 cassette that came with my Diverge to this 40 to 11 cassette from Sunrace. If you are interested in changing your cassette also I will link a video of how to do that in the description below. So final thoughts and conclusion. For final things you might need to do is if you change your cassette you might need to tune up your high and low limiter adjustments on your rear mech to suit the new cassette to make sure you don't have any problems there. Also you may need to remove a few links from your chain. For myself when I changed to a single chain ring up front but moved to a wider cassette, I find the standard chain link to work very well. So the chain you see here hasn't been shortened from its double ring setup. If you intend to keep your standard rear cassette, you're probably going to have to shorten the chain. So I'll link below a video on how to size a chain correctly. And finally, do you need to run a clutched rear mech to have a single chain ring up front? This is an interesting question, and for many years I ran a single chain ring up front with a tag rear mech with very little problem at all. I think over about three years I had two chain derailments, and mostly whilst pedalling backwards at traffic lights. So, strictly speaking, you can run a single chain ring with a non clutch derailleur, but to, for added peace of mind and security, I would always advise getting a clutch rear derailleur. Also, they make the bike significantly more quiet because you don't have any chain slap against the chainstay on rougher terrain, which I think makes it worthwhile doing just to save your damage from your frame in the first place. So, if you consider yourself a half-competent bicycle mechanic, I would definitely have a crack at this one myself. 
nothing's too hard to achieve if you've got the tools to do it and uh, yeah set aside half a day and have fun thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one Ah, oh, balls, I'm gonna have to take the cranks off. <laughs>